I think my understanding of, of humanism is more than simply being humane to one another. Um, I, I oh, think it's, it's much more. Yeah, it's, it's aspirational. More. I mean, to me, humanism is actually the, the, the higher thrust than secularism is just keep things out of the, keep religions out of day-to-day -day matters but you, humanism is aspirational it says what we could be what we should be and a means of how to be that yeah it's a statement about you know it, it's, it's up to us basically that there is no higher power there's nothing yes. you know there, there's nothing outside of us which defines what you know how we should act you mm. know basically it's, it's a choice of humanity uh, to to decide how how to behave um, so things like morality, they're, you know, we, we as a society are free to decide what morality is. Um, and, you know, it's, it's something that's fluid over time that we find, you know, we find out better ways of treating each other over time. That's what these organisations should really be there for. I, I think it's great to have that membership connection where you can, you can get people connected, you can have them going to events together and you can keep them all informed of what's going on. But I, I think... These organisations, they, they have important jobs that they're doing, certainly for the NZARH. The, the way they've taken up the mantle of fighting for secularism is great. Um, I think secularism is very important. And um, it, it's great to see them hammering away at that in so many different places, like with the Secular Education Network and, and the other groups that have come out of the NZARH. So there, there's some really good work that's going on there. Um, and it's just, yeah, it's nice to be a part of that. And it's, as I said, it's nice to free up, hopefully, some people, some pe people's time, so that they can get on with doing that external work rather than just focusing internally and preaching to the choir. Yes. And I think it rejects, it rejects um, the the kind of tribalism that you know, whether that's in the form of nationalism or religion mm. or politics. It's it's sort of saying, well. You know, we, we, we want to come together with a, a common set of principles where everyone's equal mm. and everyone has rights. Um, and, and these are the things that, that you see that, you know, the U.S. Constitution was based on. The U.S. Constitution is basically a, um, you know, it, it came out of the Enlightenment and is based on humanist principles. Yes. You know, equality and, and um, justice, regardless of who you are. So the association's job, to me, is to secure a separation, a clear separation of church and state. Because in the time since I joined the association, more and more religions had arrived in New Zealand. So, uh, you know, there's religious conflict everywhere. The world has changed in the time since I've been a member of the association, and especially New Zealand. So when you have um, so many different religions, I know uh, they'll be running, uh, run for parliament, um, I can't remember the name of that one just recently was um, but the Christians come in and they form political parties and they get want to get into Parliament. So far in New Zealand that hasn't happened but the, that threat is always there so I think that we need to protect um, our country from that sort of insidious religious invasion. Atheism has changed in the in the the early days, you know, in the 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s, um, uh, the rationalist movement was, in my opinion, quite apologetic uh, towards religion. They would have debates and they would, you know, disagree in a, um, you know, in a, a, a nice, caring manner where the, where the evangelists and the Christians went have always come out straight on attack. They've never pulled any punches. And I was never happy with that, and I was always pushing for the association to become more political, to have a stronger political voice um, that, in my opinion, wasn't very popular at all. I still feel that way, and I, over the last 20 years, we've had what I call militant atheists arrive, um, Sam Harris, um, um, atheists Aaron Ra, who are coming out and taking it to religious organisations. And I think it's not before time because our voice has been too quiet. And as a, as so I, I really think the association should be doing more and more of this sort of activity, being stronger and louder in their uh, disagreement um, of uh, any religious movement taking control of the country. 
it's, it's kind of like the golden rule you know you treat others like you would like to be treated right? yes. so so uh, there's a bit of a deeper principle in fact Mil Matt put it quite well he says you know if if you had to be part of a society where you didn't control whether you're in the majority or the minority you know for example if you were going to be you know you, you could equally be a Christian in a Muslim society or a Muslim in a Christian society um, would you want to live in a secular a secular uh, under a secular government or in a the theological government, and I think, yeah. yeah. So, so yeah. The when your principles are secular, um, and you and you want to give people the right and freedoms of speech and thought, then people aren't under threat, um, regardless of what they believe.